So the guys that have trained with me before, uh, you'll know that when I get going, if you have a four or five hours long in the session, you have to stop me, so just bear with me, you are going to have a long session. Um, I was speaking to Rico just now, it's very, uh, I don't want to say emotional, but this is my 25th year that I'm in Cape Town in 1996, I, sick, sick, yeah, sick. 1996, I gave my first seminar here in Cape Town at UCT, it was still a Jeet Kune Do seminar, I don't know who was there. Um, in the old hall where we still, Rick and I did the Hodge Gracie seminar and some of the competitions and all that. Those days BJJ wasn't even known, it was like really like underground kind of stuff. MMA wasn't known, 1996, this was like two years after uh, UFC. Uh, I don't want to mention name, but let me do it. Yeah, myself and Rodney King, we started this whole Jeet Kune Do movement here in South Africa. Uh, he went with Matt Thornton, I went with Bertrand Richardson. And uh, that's kind of where my MMA Jiu Jitsu whole thing started. In 1996, I was also very fortunate to train with Higa Machado that came out to South Africa. That was my first experience with like a legit, legit BJJ guy. And uh, yeah, awesome, awesome experience. <coughs> All right. So, what I want to do today is uh, um, Jurgen showed you guys some really cool techniques, but I want to, I want to take a different approach. A lot of times when I attend seminars, uh, all you learn is techniques. Okay? And there's only, only so much you can learn. Okay? Um, every time that you go to a seminar, if you just learn one little detail, like this last technique that you can show, which, which is an awesome technique, if you learn one little detail, that's really worthwhile your trip right here. Okay? So just remember, a book has got many resources, and over the years, you brought up all those little tricks and tips and build your own resource of information in. MMA, Jiu Jitsu, whatever you're involved in. So never come to a seminar and expect to remember and understand everything. Okay? It's the time you spend on the mats every single day. And every time you come, you make those little steps, building, 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 building. But today, um, I want to talk more about the fundamentals of the clinch, which is really important. And why I chose the clinch, when I spoke to Rico, when he told me uh, he would like to come and give me a seminar here, and uh, he said, Jürgen's going to do a BJJ seminar. I said, I want to do something different. I don't want to do BJJ. I want to do more clinch. And one of the reasons why I enjoy the clinch so much is because very few people train it. If you really think about it. You get MMA schools, you get jiu-jitsu schools, wrestling schools. And even the wrestling is not like really clinch, clinch, what we do in MMA kind of stuff. And you get your kickboxing schools and all that. But very rarely do you find, even at my gym, we do not have a clinch class. We do not have a work up against a fence class kind of thing. It's incorporated in our street combatives class or our MMA class, but there's no class specifically for this. Now, if you think about MMA, how important is this? It's probably the most neglected range in MMA. Because most people, and correct me if I'm wrong, and there's some good instructors, Anthony, that's been around for, I don't know how many years, but anyway. He's old, this guy. <laughs> right. okay. Most gyms, we do uh, kickboxing sparring and then we roll. Okay. Very small percentage gets sparred on here. Okay. And uh, my opinion is, especially in South Africa, and uh, Rico and myself as well, has had great opportunities to train with some great clinch guys, Dan Anderson, Randy Couture, and all these guys, which made their names in UFC with us. Okay. Um, and, and I just feel that in South Africa, that's one of the EFC guys registered here, here as well. One of the things that's neglecting at EFC, for example, is the guys fighting here. If you watch what happens here, even in the amateur ranks, the guys get pushed up against the fence and nobody's really got a good idea what's going on there. It's almost like hugging each other. By the way, uh, I did an Oxford research on what clinch means. Does anybody know what it really means? Had me, what else here? Is it? Come on, some kids. Don't take me up wrong now. Clinch means this. Alright, if you do an Oxford research, clinch means two people passionately holding each other intensely. Sometimes I'll bring the passion back, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so for our purposes, uh, it's a little bit different. Okay, so for clinch, <laughs> for, well, I don't know. But, but <laughs> clinch for us is combatively is two people that are attached. Okay, basically that's the basis of clinch. It's two people that's attached. So in MMA we get three ranges. Okay, stand up, clinch, and ground. Everybody understand that. Most of the times in the gyms, what do they train? Stand up and ground. 
majority of the time. Yeah, we all know most fights, 50% is going to land up on the ground. And if you do not have a ground game, you're signing your death warrant at EFC, you need a ground game. Okay? But I also feel that so many people work in the stand-up and ground that you can actually win the fight here. You can actually tie the person out here. All right? Okay. So, I, I, sorry about all I wanted to do a lot. Rico couldn't give me a big enough board. Okay? So uh, I'm still going to change this little triangle. I believe in like, explaining stuff with triangles because it's all like circular kind of stuff. Um, but later on, while you're busy training, I'm going to wipe up this one and I'm going to put something else here. My first thing is, these are the fundamentals I want to cover today in your clinch, which I'm going to explain and you're going to train these things. But I'm going to explain a little bit, you're going to get some training, explain a little bit, get some training. I don't want to just hit you with training and then you don't even hear what I've got to say next. Right, so the first thing I want to do is this triangle here. And uh, the first question I want to ask you, and some of the instructors are here, coaches, uh, or professors, or gurus, or ropes, or whatever you've got, I don't know. Um, what is the main reason people start training? What do you think? Most of you guys here. Did you start at your gym because you want to become an MMA fighter? Did you start at your gym because you saw Andre Galvea win the BJJ tournament and now you want to become a BJJ champ? What's the main reason why you started training? Self-defense. Who says self-defense? Majority of people. Okay, self-defense training. The other secondary reason is people want to get into shape. They get tired of the virgin active crap and they just want to do something else and also work the mind a bit and learn some skills and all that. And that's pretty much what we're looking at. Self-defense is one of the best things because if you think about combatively martial arts, MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, whatever, what is the reason it was originated or designed? For sport? Self-defense. Okay, that's its origin. Even Jiu-Jitsu. If you look at a guy like Hickson Gracie, uh, I always... My boys always laugh when I say this. He's, sorry for the expression. He's a godfucker of M uh, BJJ. Yeah, he's basically the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, he's going back to the roots in terms of self defense, what it was designed for. Okay? So if we look at this triangle here, we've got street, jiu jitsu, no gi, and MMA. Those are the three components that when somebody trained, wants to start in a martial art, self defense, they fall into one of those categories in terms of the school that they join. Okay, so they're going to join like a wrestling orientated school, a jiu-jitsu orientated school, or they're going to join like an MMA, striking, kickboxing, kind of Muay Thai kind of school, or they're going to go to the street school, okay, where they don't do sparring, the, the, the street school where they don't do sparring, okay? So my opinion on this is, let's just dissect that a little bit. BJJ no gi, let's look at the differences. First of all, there's no strikes, unless you're somebody like, uh, and I was very honored to you know, represent this guy and train with this guy extensively, Barry Toshido, to do some uh, research on him. He's a, it's amazing uh, grappler. He does these combat jiu-jitsu stuff as well, where they slap each other. And uh, I, I can tell you my first experience with him, he is most probably, I can't see anybody right here, he's just over 60 kilos, man. He's a little guy like this. And uh, the first time I rolled with him and he started slapping me, I was like shocked out of my system. <laughs> And uh, I promise you, I had marks, black and blue and red, and I don't know what, on my head and on my back and my neck, was probably for three, four weeks. Like he slapped me. Okay, a little guy like that. Okay, so most schools don't do that. So in the Jiu-Jitsu no gi, you got your no-strike approach. A big difference as well is there's no obstruction. So it's on an open mat kind of thing. Okay, so there's no obstruction. I'm mentioning this because this is going to make sense once I combine everything. Then you move to your MMA schools, where there's striking involved. And there's an obstruction. Okay, so the problem here is a lot of guys in the jiu-jitsu, and I'm sure the black belts will agree with me, uh, they go to MMA fights or whatever, but they've never experienced strikes. And as soon as the strikes come in, you see black belts getting beaten up because they've never experienced that kind of approach. So the tactics change between jiu-jitsu and MMA. Your jiu-jitsu changes. You can't use the same jiu-jitsu for MMA, all right? Then the other problem is uh, the fence. Your, and this is what we're going to also talk about today. Your posture, the way you approach the clinch in an open mat scenario is different to a fence scenario. Okay, so for example, in an open mat scenario, jiu-jitsu competitions, you'll get the guys nice and low like this, and they'll be doing that. You can't approach MMA like this. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? 
Okay, and you won't get two guys in MMA coverage. Have you ever done this? Come to the middle and we like start here in the middle of the of the EFC octagon, hexagon, whatever it is. Okay. And we use this. This is a tool to be used for, right? In the street, we've got no rules. First of all, the striking, but there's other stuff, components involved as well. Your environment, it's not a mat, it's not EFC lit up nice cage, it's outside in a car park. And the fence can break. Which means the guys at the back that you get into a brawl, you go right through that glass window. <laughs> okay, so it can be fence or no fence. Does that make sense? All right. So my reason why I'm doing this is, ultimately we all started for street. So if you want to start thinking about your reason for training, jujitsu, a lot of jujitsu guys go to the street approach, okay, which is nothing wrong. I believe that you should do jujitsu, add the strikes and the fence work and the MMA training, and then from there add the street tactics and all the different environments and all that kind of thing as well. All right? Same as what some MMA guys go directly for the street approach in terms of they do MMA for self-defense, but they neglect the fundamental of groundwork a lot. Gi work and all that like uh, Jürgen was doing with you now, the chokes and all that, with the clothing and all that. All right? So if you want to take a comprehensive approach towards street, uh, I would suggest that kind of approach. Okay, first get a good foundation of no-gi jiu-jitsu, then add your strikes in, and obviously some stand-up and clinch work in, and then add the street aspects in. Now there will be, uh, sorry, I didn't watch it, so. There'll be some street schools, okay, they don't do the sparring, and the guy will uh, simulate a right strike, and they'll do this, just work with me, and they'll go like, ooh, so check here, go down, and they'll do this, and they'll, here. Yeah. What's the problem? And I'll draw that over and over and over again. Sorry, Adam. No, he, he's a fighter. He should not swing. So if, if I do this and I start, what are you going to start doing? He's going to start resisting. It's not going to work that way. All right? So some street schools, they don't add the what in. That. And that's where they fall short. Okay? Because I'll just kick you in your groin and you're not going to continue fighting. If I kick you in the groin and I don't put you down, what's going to happen? You're going to be pissed off or more passive or more aggressive. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to be more aggressive towards me. And if you can't deal with that aggression, what's going to happen? And this is what this teaches you to deal with that what? Pressure. And that's so, so important for your self-defense training. Does that make sense? Right, so we're going to look at fundamentals, which means what? Basics. Basics, basics is everything. Okay, you can ask Anthony, Rico, Jürgen, all the guys that have got fighters at EFC and all this. Techniques at work are not fancy techniques the basics. You must get the basics right. Okay? Everybody understand that? So what we're going to do first is in a clinch, my approach towards a clinch, you have to use your legs. Which means this. When we're clinching, I'm going to show you different kinds of clinch. A lot of people stand here and they use arms and they're wrestling with their arms all the time. You're going to tire out. You're definitely going to tire out. The more I can drive into the person with my legs, the more this can be relaxed and I can move to positions. So as a warm-up drill, and then this is going to lead to the second one. As a warm-up drill, I just want you to do this. Partner's going to put palms on the hips like that, so you don't get the thumbs involved. Inside, mine's going to be outside. Adam's going to push against me, I'm going to push against him, and we're just going to drive against each other, just to feel that. All right? I don't want you running all over the show, but I just want you to feel that. All right? When I say change, you're just going to swap hands around. Everybody got it? Okay, ready? One, two. Okay, and we pummel, pummel. But the whole idea is to do what? To get that, okay, for the center holder. Once you get here, you've got different positions here, which de de uh, determines what you want to do. All right, so I'm not going to do that. The other one that I want you to show you today is the necktie pummeling, okay, because it's going to be like street MMA kind of approach. So, uh, had me around my neck here, and I'm here. Did you feel like you almost got no control of the guy with the outside position here? Right here, we can throw knees and start striking and all this, but we're just working on the clinch for today. So, the way I'm going to do this is. Okay, one hand, cup, here, right? One hand. This one I'm showing you is the same as this. This. Body lock pummeling. This is necktie pummeling. One hand. When I release, if I go underneath, what's going to happen? I'm going to fall short. Okay, see that I fall short, so I have to go. Let go. Now I'm on the inside, around my neck, 
Now, how do we will do the same? One hand cup on the bicep, yeah. Other hand on the inside, over the top, and grab center hold. Cup. See, I put pressure here. What am I doing wrong? What about point number one? Yeah, so important with this is, if I want to do this and he pushes, I'll never be able to get it. Because there's nothing happening yet. Okay, so I need to, as I'm doing this, I need to drive into him, drive into him to get that position. I'm not going to stand still. This is what's going to determine that position. Okay, so I don't want you to go too wild right now because we've still got a lot of stuff to do. Grab. Once again. One. This position here, yeah, I can still strike from here. Just with this control, I can still work to different options as well. Okay, but just for the draw, over the top with my legs, center hold. I told you about this necktie position. This is also important to understand. With a necktie, I get many, I don't know about the other coaches here, many guys do that naturally. They always want to do this. This is like really a weak grip, okay? So we've got two basic grips. The one is this, here, and then the traditional Muay Thai grip here. So just to give you an understanding here, when I do this, and also very important, if my elbows are out, body lock, that's going to happen. So my elbows determine, and you're going to see just now with some of the angles that we're going to work. Elbows determine when Hadney pushes forward, create that space. Push, grab, body lock. Body lock. Grip. See that? The space there. And this is going to determine these. You see Randy Couture's fights like this the whole time. Boom. Okay? So when he does a level change to shoot for my legs, that stays there. I don't go level change, shoot for the legs. It's like stuff. Where are you? Okay? All right. So it's that sensitivity must be there the whole time. Okay? So here, this here is going to help to break the posture. Is he stronger here or is he stronger there? Up. Uh, wrestler's neck up. None of you guys grapple like this. You don't even see the Springbok scrum, but, well, maybe sometimes, but yeah. So you don't even see them scrumming like that. It's always here. Even when you shoot, it's here. Right? So, resist neck. Look at the grip. Hold me. Getting long so good. Do it again. Relax. See that? So I can break his posture to do what? Whatever I want to start doing, work to positions, whatever. Just by breaking that. When would I use this? Manipulate his body and to obviously strike, but... This is to move the body. This is to break the posture. Okay, so just let you on and over. Okay, so keep the forearms there. Cup, roll. Most guys, you can even do it with one hand. It's like really difficult to resist. Two hands, definitely. Okay. This one. Yeah, and also sensitivity. Everybody understand that? Okay, so grab again. Here. <coughs> right. Academy does the same, and I want you to push into each other. One, two. Check the grip, depending on what you want to do. Got that? Okay, ready. One, two. Go. Feedback. Do these triangle make sense? Does it like, like, all right, yeah, that's cool. Okay, I just want you to understand your art a little bit better. All right, next thing that we look at is head position. This is so, so important. This is something that, you know, can determine if you dominate in the position or not. Even on the ground. If I, sorry, I if I do that, turn towards me, yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah, so if I, Control that, I can minimize a lot of movement here. Guess what? On your back, same on the ground. That's why when we, when we do like street stuff and I do that, it's like, turn towards me. There's no ways. Okay? No ways. Right? Just now we got another American thing that we can Even in your jiu jitsu, when I'm like this and I do the shoulder pressure, it's kind of tough for the guy to turn into. And if I do that, which way is it uh, easier for you to turn? Yep. Take his back. Yep. So you can start setting up like that just with some head control. This is not always going to be 100%. Obviously, you know, there's no... What is 100%? Okay. Boom. <laughs> 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 no submission is 100%. Okay. 
percent, nothing is hundred percent. Yes, you always have a backup plan. That's what you do to teach you to make chess money. But this is so so important. All right. So when we do the angle, this is my head position. I'm controlling the head. Depends on what I want to do. Just turn a little bit here like this so you can see. Okay. Depends on what I want to do. If I want to get closer in the clinch, I would replace it with that. Look at his head position, look at my head position. I'm the rugby scrum. Have you ever seen guys scrum like this? There's no strength in there. For him to get back to a good position, he has to fight for head position. In the neck. So basically it's got to do with, up against a federal wall, I have to get my legs, spine, head in alignment. That's basically what we need to do with a head position. Not like this. This is not head position. Not like that, pop in. He's actually in a better position right now. Once he starts getting uh, more space and hip movement, he's in a better position. Okay, so the way we'll deal with this is like change. So this is very awkward to practice, but it's, I find it's important. Is heading there. Heading my neck. So head up. Head up. See what happens to you. He's going underneath. <laughs> okay, so all I want you to do is pull back and head in there. Just like, yeah. So, see how I stay in contact? Yeah, I'll stay in contact. Yeah, push with your leg. Right, so this is going to be the quiet to the heart. That's going to be a fight. That's why you get these here. <laughs> all right. So, important with this now, once you get here, you're just adding this up. Necktie. Angle. I decide I need to push this guy up against the fence. I want to start grappling or working takedowns or whatever. Head position. Head position. Spine legs. Head position. Not head position. Yeah? I want to control this. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Right. So, one more time. He pushes in on me. Boom. Strike. Under overhook. Head position. Even though I'm taller than him, where's my head? Lower. I'm not like this. He's in my left side. You should be able to, what? You relax here. Yeah. You should be doing all the work. That's real strength. Everybody got it? Okay, ready? One, two. Right, so the question was when I get here, what happens first? Okay? The guys were asking, it looked like I grabbed here pretty quick and then get. I do not want to lose control of this. Because as soon as I lose control of this, he's going to re-pummel and come back to me. Okay, he's not going to stay there for me. Right. So when I angle off like this, and I'm busy, busy striking, and I decide I'm going to take this guy down, move his back, or whatever I want to do, I replace my head with that. Yeah. That's the first thing. Split second later, this one's going to go under or over, depending on the height. Depending on the height of your guy. Okay? If the guy's like really tall, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm going to work underneath here. Okay, if he's like really short, I'm not going to try and do that. I'm going to do work over. So depending on that as well. That will just be a sensitivity in terms of as we move in, this will just switch whatever's natural. This is important as well. Okay? If you can grab the wrist, go for it. If you can't, because if he moves his hand around, and I'm trying to grab it, it's like kind of tough. Into the bicep. Once I've got the bicep, then I can move to grab the wrist. Okay? So if I do that again, push, angle, head, and then we go. Another good question was, if the guy's like really tall and I can't get that, doesn't matter, your structure must be strong. Okay, so I don't want you to cause his tool to go like, <laughs> like that. Your structure's weak. He's already much bigger and stronger than you, now you're even weaker. So I'd rather you, uh, Rico, is James Dalton still training with you? <laughs> Okay, so now you're now strong. Okay, yeah. well, you're not just going to buck on his neck like that. So the last thing you want to do is weaken the structure. So everything comes from here to the spine into the neck. So even if he is taller than me, I'll be in this position. Okay. Like I said, the good thing about this is it makes it easier for me to start moving to the back and tapping the legs because I'm closer. All right. Last triangle. So this one is, looks a bit ugly because I was shaking already and any of it. All right, so this basically determines what is the clinch. 
We already said it's when Hadley and I passionately get together. <laughs> All right. But this is basically the three ranges in MMA, street, even in jiu-jitsu to a certain degree. Because you start off in the stand-up, you kind of clench, and you go down to the ground. So those are the three main ranges that we're working in. Some guys, and sometimes it might happen from stand-up, like EFC maybe, uh, you strike and the guy falls down and you jump on him. Okay? And there's not much clinch carrying on. So this happens rarely. That's why I've got one arrow moving up there from stand-up to ground. This is usually how it works. That's not... <laughs> That's my whiteboard cleaner. <laughs> Alright, this is usually how it works. From stand up we go to clench. From clench we go to ground. So why is clinch so important? The clinch determines if you're going down to the ground or the determines if you're going to be standing up. So once you get to this position here, if your clinch is good, you can control the fight taking it down to the ground. Or if you're up against a grappler and you've got some clinch skills, anti-grappling skills, you can determine if it's going to go stand-up. Okay, yeah, it doesn't always work that way, but that's majority what can control. You have to work through the clinch. You never see an MMA fight, the guys kickbox and they say, all right, during the fight they just both sit down and they start grappling. Okay? <laughs> it has to happen there. Even in a street fight, that doesn't happen. Like I say, the only time is maybe in a knockout where it goes from there to there, the guy falls down and the guy jumps on top and you avoid that clinch. What is also important, there's three main ranges and there's two transitional ranges. Who knows what I'm talking about? Besides Anthony and the guys. Two transitional ranges that a lot of people overlook. Which the clinch is like the most important in that transitional range. From clinch, how do I move back to stand up in terms of kickboxing? From clinch, how do I take somebody down? When I'm on the ground, how do I stand up and there's a clinch again? So the transition between, the two, between these three ranges. From stand up, how do I get to the clinch? From clinch, how do I take down? From the ground, how do I stand up? From the clinch, how do I back off to kickboxing again? These are what are called transitional ranges. So you don't in MMA or the street like we kickbox. Sorry, this, so I don't know who's all beginners yet. We kickbox, the fight, referee blows, and we all right, clinch, and we clinch, and we yeah, and the referee can fall down on the ground, and we carry on there. There's something that happens in between. Okay? And those transitional ranges is something that you also need to practice and learn how to control. And that's going to help you not go down to the ground. That's going to teach you when you're on the ground how to stand up. When I train my boys, it's like when the fight goes bad. Okay? When you can't control the fight anymore, you wanted to keep it stand up or clinch or take down and it doesn't, and now the fight's gone bad, how do we control those intermittent ranges? Does that make sense? All right. Next one we're looking at is immobilization. What would I say? And somebody was saying, yeah, have you done Wing Chun before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's part of the Jeet Kune Do. So Wing Chun is basically like center line, uh, boom, trap, block, and we go boom, and it hits trap and you just trap, 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 trap. He's not a Wing Chun guy, so I don't look good. All right. <laughs> But this is my other argument. <laughs> that doesn't look good because he's not a Wing Chun guy. <laughs> yeah? Is that a real combat? Is that, does it work like that? No disrespect. Two karate guys look good. Two taekwondo guys look good. Two, yeah. Mix it up. Who looks good? Who's effective? <laughs> understand what I'm saying. So we need to also understand that. So immobilization means controlling limbs. Controlling the limbs in the clinch. So, for example, you saw me go here and I started controlling limbs. Controlling limbs so that I can strike. Controlling limbs, I say his head is also a limb because his head determines where the body is going to go. Controlling limbs, controlling limbs, underhooks, overhooks, controlling limbs. Uh, what I also like doing is, especially if the guy is very mobile on the ground, you start working high crotches and all that. Because this takes away a little bit of his movement when you start controlling limbs. Still here position, but high crotch movement, control the limits. Okay, so this is also imperative in the clinch that you have to control limits. You can't just work here and forget about all these things. You have to control limits. So basic one on one, when you get to the clinch, head position, underhook, overhook, wrist control. Those three basics is what you should start with fundamentally. And that's controlling the limb. Controlling the limb, controlling the limb, controlling the limb. Does that make sense? 
Right. Now, your, your posture is also changed depending on what you're doing. So the clench changes. Street clench, how does that look? Grab. Yeah, <laughs> street clench. Yeah, most of the time, street clench. Jiu-jitsu clench. Okay, yeah, the guys clench, but most of the time it's like hand wrestling, controlling loads. MMA clench. You seen MMA guys? <laughs> yeah, you, you will get knocked out very quickly. Yeah. MMA clench is more like a neutral pummeling position. Deep, why? Because you're worried about the strikes. It can't be narrow like this because, yeah, the strikes come through. So you're usually like deep in the clinch. Postures change. Street clinch, upright. Jiu Jitsu clinch, low. Yeah? MMA clinch? In between. Yeah, kind of in between with that structure that I was talking about. Okay, where the guys were like wrestle, like kind of in between. Okay? You won't see MMA fights like clinching, like this, unless they're like totally exhausted kind of thing. Okay, everybody understands. So the posture changes, the clench changes. Depending on what your goal is and what fight you're in. Yeah, does that make sense? We need to mobilize limbs, which means head, shoulder, arms, legs. Yeah, I can do high crouch or I can even start controlling with, with legs here. There's a lot of other fundamentals I'm not going through. I just thought sharing these ones with you. The last one, because Rico is giving me the evil eye there, I need to finish. Last one is the hips. Why would I say hips? <laughs> That's Why would I say hips? You, you, guys, you guys know in the ground fighting, if you don't do your hip movement, what happens? You stuck. Most beginner guys would do what? The more advanced guys, when you roll against them, what do they do? No, that. This here, I want you to visualize this. From there, it just does that. No difference. <laughs> no difference. So if he's pushing me up against the fence, yeah, I need to get some kind of undercover, but I'm working this the whole time. Working this the whole time. Yeah. Working that the whole time. Spaces. Place. Hips, hips, hips. Right, so if he wants to pin me against the fence, control hips more, hips, yeah, even like this, like I say, if somebody does that, I would start working space. Okay, we start breaking through and getting my hips to move. So if you're nice and low, you control those hips, head up, yeah, control those hips more, yeah, and now, it becomes kind of an out base, so being jacked There's a simple way that you can also control the hips, for example, when I've got the underhook, is to take the wrist and press it into the hip. Hold there. When he moves, yeah, I can control that hip a little bit more. If he moves, let's go again. Yeah, thank you. Control it there. I'm not going to hold it there forever, but it's got some kind of movement control there, so he has to start doing something, and then we work for those. Here. One, two, six. Hold it. All those things. All right? So if you look at the fundamentals, let's run through it quickly. Use your legs. Very, very important. I'm doing this because you walk into a class and the coach says, right, we're going to do clinch, here's some techniques, whatever, and you like, how do I put this all together? What am I actually doing? Just learning techniques or I need some fundamental to understand what I'm doing. Use your legs when you're in the clinch. Drive. Okay? Center control, you guys felt. In the middle, easier to control the body. Okay? Angles. Force against force, tough. Learn to angle, place, depending on what you want to do. Depending on, we did all these. Strikes, we place head position, take downs, move to the back, or place, place, move away. Okay? Head position, so that I could, place now. Control more body movement. Okay, he needs to put his head in direct with me to move towards me, so if I start controlling that, that helps a lot to minimize, even on the ground. Immobilization, you have to start controlling limits. You have to start controlling limits. Okay? And then hips. Hips are really, really important. Okay? Even if you're not even against the wall, if we're in a neutral position like this, okay? if we are resting right here, it's like I can use straight here, but my 
hips are going to determine how I'm going to move. How I'm going to move out of that. If I don't move this, very, very tough. Okay, any questions? Must be one question. Mm. 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 Uh, <laughs> so we spoke about street outside. Right? Yeah. There's quite a few jobs that involve conflict situations like hospital stuff like that. Yeah. How does it cleanse inside a built environment? Inside a building environment? Yeah. Same as a cage. Now we, you know, uh, in, in our street combat ops classes, we, uh, I explained the thing about asocial violence versus social violence. Asocial violence is when your life is in danger. Social violence is like when Hadley and I fight about the same girl or whatever the situation. It can escalate to asocial violence. So he gets totally pissed off with me, he breaks a bottle, now he wants to stab me. So from pushing each other, it can escalate asocial. It can never escalate, he stabs me, it's like, oh, shh, sorry, put down the bottle, let's rather grapple. Okay, so it can never de-escalate. Once you go past that and your life's in danger, your life's in danger. So depending on the situation, most of the social encounters can be avoided because it's ego, alcohol, this kind of stuff. Okay? Uh, asocial, obviously, awareness, situational awareness, all that can also be avoided. Your situation at a hospital, I mean, I've had a lot of doctors train with me and they say, especially in the state hospitals, some violent crap happens there. People get attacked. Um, so I would say, yeah, controlling like your jiu-jitsu, trying to control, you cannot kill the patient unless he takes like a scalpel and he wants to like stab you and you defend yourself legitimately. Yeah, no problem. But even then, depending if there's weapons or no weapons involved, your clinch will immediately determine, yeah, see, think street, is there weapons, is there no weapons involved? Believe me, once a guy pulls a knife or a gun, you don't want to, uh, besides a firearm now, you don't really want to clinch that guy with a knife. A firearm is actually easier to clinch with because it's a one-directional tool. A knife is a multi-directional tool, and once that thing starts moving, it's like really difficult to control. So, basically speaking, a knife, you actually want to create distance, scalpel or whatever you've got there. A firearm, either be totally out of distance or you want to be really close to be able to control the muzzle and all that. So, it all depends on the situation, but these fundamentals you can use in street, MMA, uh, yeah, some of it in jiu-jitsu as well, but uh, more street and MMA kind of approach. Okay. Yeah. Um, when it comes to immobilizing limbs, limbs yeah. Which yeah. one you say is more important? Do you first have to break someone's grip? If you have a limb and they have a limb, do you first have to break that? Are you talking about jujitsu now or street MMA? Well, street MMA, jujitsu. See, I would even, if, uh, for example, let's say he's got, he's got my limb right there, yeah. and he's controlling right there, I would even break free and But if you had to sacrifice your, your grip, your grip, to, yeah, break, you, to break their grip, MMA now. Street. Street. <laughs> Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu well, Jiu-Jitsu is always like depends on if you're in danger for the submission. Most of the time you don't want somebody to grab on you, you want to break grips immediately. Jiu-Jitsu is a little bit slower in a sense and you've got more time. Street and MMA you do not have that much time in luxury. So you have to act more instinctively towards the situation. Jiu-Jitsu you've got a little bit more time with grips and all this kind of stuff. But they say but, as a woman, sorry, if sure. I know immobilized her yeah, against yeah, a guy. Yeah, take your friend there, stand well, up, let's show <laughs> Yeah, so we can all okay, understand. They say, sorry guys, these are two women. They say sorry. this is a man, <laughs> and yeah. he grabbed my yeah, yeah, arm, yeah. and I managed to, but now to get this loose, I yeah. need this other arm. Exactly what I showed you now is the so best. This is I would pace. definitely, yeah, yeah. I would, if that was my situation that the guy's here, and I've got this here, I wouldn't let go yet. So I wouldn't like do this and he grabs and this kind of yeah. yeah, I wouldn't do that. I would continue you know, to do that kind so of thing. So you'd rather thing. try to get something else to break Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Once I once I get this, this this for me is golden. This for me is golden. Even from here if I come in and hit with a head, boom, and then break free here. Okay. I always want to try and retain that. Okay. I always want to try and break his structure or his base. Okay, in jiu-jitsu as well, you want to break his base. Yeah. So it's always head position before the limbs. So you always try to control head position I, I would, before the limbs. Some coaches would disagree. I would say head position is one of the top priorities to get. Anthony? Yeah. Yeah. Top priorities with a head position. The guy can even can even have me locked up. Yeah. And then I'd start working with my head position. I'd start working with the head. And believe me, somebody's head grinding in you like this, it's like no fun. 
<laughs> Especially if you've got a head like mine. Okay? So yeah, if it's like that, yeah, that's no fun. Okay? Keep pushing. So even if he leaves this and I'm busy holding, this is no fun. He can he can put a lot of pressure in a current. Okay, for, keep pushing. In the street, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get the eyes. Yeah, that's a good zing. Yeah. Once I get that, I create the stress. Yeah. Uh, even the, one of my boys in the last fight at UFC, you'll see, <laughs> and the commentator says, yeah, if you can't punch, you can use slaps as well. <laughs> my son was like, <laughs> hitting this guy again, yeah, release the grip. So uh, I would say head position is like one of your most top priorities to have. Head position, definitely. Okay? Because I could have all this, and you had me get to head position, He's in a much stronger position now than what I am. The only way I can deal with this now is actually sacrificing the other. We adjust and move to a different position. Okay? Right, anything else? Yeah? So if we just go where we initially went to, you say, get out of the trainer's way yep. in Jiu Jitsu now. Yep. How would you transition that into a takedown or getting the person to the ground so without compromising yourself? It all depends. Jiu-Jitsu, we kind of really want to work from shoulders down to legs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, MMA, street, for example, if I'm like this and pushes against me, and I snap down and I start working, so there's those kind of things. And like we did today, if I'm here like this and there, you know, one, one of the nice ones though is just that knee tap. Okay. If I'm in this position here and I push towards there, look at what his leg does to catch his balance. Yeah, don't even grab. I just call it a knee tap. So I just do it step over in the mouth. That, that, that's one of the first basic takedowns that you should do. Okay? I mean, there's millions of these things. Another one is because of the structure. This comes from uh, more Filipino martial arts. So if you triangles. So there's his two legs. Where's the weakness? Mm. There. So if he's standing like that, that is straight. There's a weakness. So, uh, John, I think it was your partner that was asking about the head position. Even if I don't get it in the neck and I just got it here, see that? Take him to the weakness. Yeah, so there's a lot of takedowns that you can. Uh, one of the favorites that my boys like doing is from here. He's a single leg. They love dying up there So <laughs> he always picks up single legs and yeah, that's what they go for as well. If you fight them, they won't do it with you. Yeah. <laughs> just saying, you're not giving away our tricks. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of takedowns. Again, depending on sport and street. Most of the time, street, you actually don't want to go down to the ground. You want to keep it standing and here and all that. Sport, yeah, you can take down MMA. Or, okay, unless you've got somebody standing and watching you in the street, and you can take it down and control. Okay, anything else? Yes? Um, so, for example, a street situation, if you're in a clinch and then they pull a knife in that situation, what would you? If you're in the clinch, yeah. you abort everything, you go for the weapon. So this thing where you guys say, right, I'm in here, the guy stabs, but he's open for punches, I couldn't care. <laughs> this is what I go for first. You always go for the weapon first. Doesn't matter what, you go for the weapon first. You either disarm or immobilize the guy, then you strike him, but you always go for the weapon. There's, there's no ways I'll do anything else. Uh, if two guys can stand in a cage and beat each other up for 15 minutes and they can still stand, What's going to say that you're going to punch or hurt this guy and he's going to fall apart just with one punch or whatever the situation? And you haven't even done a sparring class. Okay, so <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? So you'll have to immobilize that weapon, especially a knife. Knife, guys, I, I personally, um, you can do some research on me. Uh, been involved in the security world for about 25 years now. And personally, I'm more afraid of a knife than a gun. Just because of the mobility of the thing in close quarters, it's like, it's, it's vicious. Vicious, vicious, vicious. So uh, a, a knife thing, and the problem with the knife is all of you guys are knife experts. You've been using a knife since three, four years old. You know exactly how this thing works. You hold it in, a child that's eight years old, and they do this in front of you with a real knife, your life's in danger. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what skill you've got. But with a firearm, you need some kind of training to use a firearm and all these kinds of things. But with a knife, it's so easy. Okay, so I'm personally more afraid of a knife than anything else. Yeah. If the opportunity is there, if you're busy clinching with us now, the guy puts a knife up, stuff, get away there. Uh, this is what a lot of people say they don't have to do self defense. All I'll do is kick him in the groin and run away. My first question is, how far can you run? And the guy 
guys like this. How far can you run? Kick him in the groin and then what? Like I said, if I kick him in the groin and it doesn't work, you're going to be more passive, more aggressive. I don't know. You should have a backup plan. <laughs> Much better than that. Yeah. <laughs> So it all depends on the situation. Guys, I really feel that your, uh, uh, your training, your jiu-jitsu training, and you've got great coaches here, uh, you should add some street flavor into it just to get a little bit more benefit out of your training as well. Um, and like I said, that think street, train sport, practice the art. And uh, my, my last message to you now is um, I personally think we should move more back to that in terms of the respect, the humbleness, training it as a martial art instead of having attitudes and ego and Conor McGregor stuff and all this kind of thing. That, that irritates the crap out of me. You know, it's like kind of some of my kids watch this stuff and they think that's how they must act as an MMA athlete and it's like so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Sorry to say. Anthony, do you agree? Ricard, do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we're all on the same page here. So uh, Gary, sorry. <laughs> Cameraman, do you agree? Sure. Yeah, cool. Right, so uh, that, that's my last message to you, and um, yeah, I hope we see each other soon again. Hope you enjoy. Okay.